So, you want to make your own Sonic 1 ROM hacks. Well, you've come to the right place. Hi, my name is Selby. I've been making my own Sonic ROM hacks since 2008, so 17 years ago at the time of recording this video. It's been a long time, but I'm glad I can share my knowledge with you today. Before we get started, I just want to emphasize that we're working with Sonic 1 today because it's the most easy to understand for beginners. You can also choose Sonic 2, but my suggestion for beginners specifically is that you do not touch Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Trust me, that game is way too huge for beginners. So we will do Sonic 1 today. The first thing that you will need when you get started is what's called a disassembly. A disassembly is the original Sonic 1 ROM, like the raw binary data, decompiled and then arranged in a way that we can work with it. This is made by the community and has been worked on for years and it's a very good place to work with. There are a lot of alternatives out there, but because I don't want to overwhelm you today, I'm just going to stick with this one. There's just one thing I want you to know before we continue, and that is over here. This is the branch selector, and when it comes to Sonic ROM hacking, there are two different assemblers that we use. If you don't know what an assembler is, don't worry, we will get to that. But basically, we have the choice between AS and ASM68K. This one is faster, but not as well documented. This one is more documented, more powerful, but slower to compile. For the sake of this tutorial, I will stick with AS, but you're also okay if you choose ASM68K. The choice is up to you. Here over at the GitHub page for the Sonic 1 disassembly, which I will have downloaded in the description, you can go over here and if you're familiar with Git, you can just clone the repository. If you don't know what that means and you have no idea what Git is, don't worry, we can just always download the zip. Once we've downloaded the zip, we just take the folder inside, extract it somewhere. And this is going to take a while because there are a lot of files inside of there. Once everything's extracted, we can go inside the folder and here you have everything that you will need. So the first thing that I want you to do before we continue, if you haven't done that already, is to enable file extensions. This .bat, .lua, .asm. Trust me, that's going to save you so much headache down the line. If you don't know how to do that, you just go here over on view and then over here, click the small checkbox that says file name extensions. So this is what it looks like without and this is what it looks like with. Now then that we're here, we can actually get started. The first thing that we're going to do before we do anything else is we're going to click build.bat or batch. If you do that, the first thing that's going to happen is probably Something like this popping up telling you, oh God, this is some scary unknown file. There's nothing you need to worry about. Hundreds of people use this software. It's just unknown software and Windows is going to complain. So no need to always ask, run anyway. And as you just saw, a terminal was popping up telling us that stuff was getting compiled. And here it is, s1build.bin. This is always going to be the output file of your game. So. We can just open this with some emulator. I'm just going to use Bizhawk. And as you can see, it is the original Sonic 1 game completely untouched. Exactly bit for bit the game as you know it. So now that we know that everything works, we can actually start doing something interesting. First off, I want to show you the basics on how to edit levels, because that is a very simple way to get started. And it's always going to be something that you want to do anyway. For that, we're going to use something called Sun LVL, which once again, I will have linked in the description. So we go down here and we're going to use the updater. So we get the zip downloaded. And once again, I'm just going to take this stuff and extract it into this folder. You can also put it elsewhere. Just this is what I chose for now. Open the updater and here you can choose what you need. As you can see, this updater has a lot of stuff, but what I want you to download for now is Sun LVL. And you can also download the INI files, but as you may have already seen, they're already in the disassembly that we downloaded earlier. If they are missing, you can just download them here. It would be Sonic 1 Git INIs. So we download the selected stuff and boom, just like that, we have everything here. 
Now, once again, if you don't like having everything in the same folder, don't worry, you can just make a subfolder or whatever. It doesn't matter where you put it. The only thing that is important is the location of these ini files. They always need to be in the root folder of your disassembly. So let's open Sun LVL, go to open, and from here, we can open our project file, which is located in the Sun LVL ini files folder. There are a bunch of ini files in here, but the only two that we care about are these two at the bottom, Sun LVL ini and Ref00. For those who don't know, Sonic 1 has two official revisions. Ref00, which is probably the one you played as a child, and Ref01, which is an updated version that was only released in Japan. If we go into the sonic.asm file, which is the root file of this entire game, right here at the top, you can see that there are three different revisions that we can edit. It is set to one by default, but if you wanted to have the inferior ref zero, you can also do that. If you wanted to have the ref two, you can also do that, which fixes the infamous spike bug. But the way that thing fixes a spike bug is not really ideal. So I would suggest you just leave it at ref one. Because it's ref one, we also know that we need this one without any ref stuff. So open it. And at first you might see that nothing has happened, but if we go the file again, you can see all the levels of Sonic right here. So let's go to Green Hill Zone Act 1. And would you look at that? We have the level right here. Everything is exactly where we expect it. So to get you started with, I just want to show you how you can work with objects. Let's just add a new monitor right here. And if we go to the right over at subtype, you can see that there are all the types for monitors already here selectable. Let's use the S monitor because that is a monitor that is not used anywhere else. Let's just save and go back to our build.bat. And then let's run S1 build again. You can see the previous file that was built has been renamed to pref.bin. In case you ran into a bug and want to compare the two builds you just made, you can do that. But yeah, let's open S1 build again. And if we go here in Green Hill Zone, we should see our S monitor, just like we just placed them. And if we break it, nothing will happen. But that's expected because turns out that monitor has no code inside it. It's just blank, but we can change that. Right here at the top of your disassembly, you have something called ink opsh, which means included objects. If we go inside, you can see every single object inside of Sonic's one disassembly. And when it comes to monitor content specifically, we need to open file 2E, monitor content power-ups. This is what that looks like. And if we scroll down a little bit, we can see all the power-ups for invincibility, rings, and so on. And here it is, the S, which literally does nothing. It just has a single knob instruction, which literally means no operation. I guess they wanted to do something with it and then ran out of time or had no more use for it. The goggles monitor isn't even coded inside. So we can do something very simple to get started with and make the S monitor a very cheap supersonic mode. What is supersonic under the hood? Speed shoes and invincibility. And to do that, all we need to do is check out how invincibility works with the other monitors. So invincibility technically has a lot of stuff like shield objects, which is too complicated for now. So basically all we need to do is steal the code that makes Sonic invincible, which happens to be this line. It moves one to V in Vink. If you don't know what that means yet, and there's a good chance you don't, I will have this linked in the description as well. This is Marky Jester's 68K tutorial, and this is one hell of a good resource to get you started with. It assumes that you know absolutely nothing about how assembly works or computer memory or anything like that. What I recommend you do is, along with getting your feet wet with level editing, is that you go 
to this tutorial and work from section to section. If you don't want to do the whole thing at once, I can totally understand it. But at the very least, I recommend you do section one because it gives you the very basics that you need to know. And then from there on, whenever you stumble upon an instruction that you don't recognize, I would suggest you just go to this page, find the instruction that you're not familiar with and work from there. But anyway, let's go back to our code. So we want to make Sonic Invincible. So we copy this line, scroll down to a check S, we can remove the previous knob instruction, and now Sonic is invincible. And now let's also go to the speed shoes code and see how it's done there. So we can't just copy this one flag because all that will do is speed up the music. What we actually want to do is copy this code, which is responsible for changing Sonic's speed values. So let's copy that go down here, paste it in, and let's save. Now I know that this is very basic and I highly encourage you to work on the code stuff yourself. Just play around. It doesn't even have to be this monitor code. You could also go into any other object file and just play around. Really, that is the best way you learn. That along with Market Justice tutorial. But anyway, let's build our code again and let's see if it worked. So in just about a second, if we break our S monitor over here, we should... Yes, we're fast and yep, we are invincible. And because we didn't have any time limits set, this invincibility and speed shoe stuff should last forever. Ah, spikes are not hurting us. Beautiful. So yeah, that is the very basics of how to get started. Now, just one more thing, and that is Flex 2. Go to the release downloads, download whatever version is applicable to you. For me, it's uh, Win32 x64. Once again, extract it somewhere. Doesn't have to be the root folder. I just like having everything in one place. Let's open Flex 2. And Windows complains again about, oh God, some unknown file. So we go to more info and click run anyway. Anyway, what is Flex 2? It is a sprite editor. So sprites is everything in the game that moves in small blocks. That includes Sonic, Rings, Badniks, Eggman, basically anything that isn't part of a fixed level layout. So once you're in here, you will go to project choose file and once again in the root folder that you will have downloaded earlier there already is a project file which is sonic one flexjson so open that and now over here at the project selector you will see a bunch of folders popping up so for example let's go to common monitor and then click on object load and now as you can see all the sprites for the object including our s is in here so now we go to mappings, we can actually take this mapping and from here we can work with it. So now just as a very basic example, let's play around with this S. So if we double click it, we can use the arrow keys to move it around. So we, let's put it over here and you can also see some instructional commands down at the bottom. So if we press H, it will get mirrored. If you press V, it will get flipped. And now it looks very weird, but it doesn't matter for the sake of this tutorial. Click on save, which will save everything that we've just edited. Once again, go back to build.bat. And there you have it, the S monitor that is incredibly cursed. But once again, <laughs> it was just about giving you an idea. Now, the very last thing that I wanna tell you about is actually about coding itself. So for example, if we go back to our code and we add some stuff that doesn't exist, save and click build.bat again, we will get an error. Instruction unknown, press any key to continue. If that was too fast for you or you want to revisit the error that you just saw, you will have noticed that a sonic.log file has been created, which as you might expect is simply giving you the error again. You will also notice that our S1 build, not the pref version, but the current one, has disappeared because obviously we didn't successfully build our ROM. So we go back to our monitor code, we delete that useless line, build it again, and there it is, all in its glory. So I hope that this tutorial was helpful. I know this was a lot at once, 
And unfortunately, I don't really know any simpler way to get you started with the wonderful world of Sonic hacking. But from here, you should have no trouble working your way up. And in the description, I will have linked a whole bunch of stuff to get you comfortable with Sonic hacking. There are tutorials everywhere. There are even more tools than the ones I've shown you today, even though those are the most commonly used ones. And yeah, I think I'm just gonna leave it at that. If you've got any suggestions for future Sonic hacking tutorials, then please leave them in the comments. If you had any trouble setting this up, you can also ask, though I would prefer if you get any trouble, you will ask in the respective Discord servers, which I will also have linked in the description below. So anyway, I've been Selby. Thank you so much for watching and have fun and good luck hacking. Peace out. Bye bye.